So Bitcoin just hit a new all time high up to 125K. What typically happens next? So today I'm going to walk you through three on chain metrics that help us understand what comes after these major breakouts. So first up, I want to talk about the long term holder net position change. This shows us whether conviction holders, people who've held Bitcoin for over 155 days are either accumulating or distributing their Bitcoin on chain, right? Moving to different wallets, consolidating UTXOs, either sending it to exchanges or friends, right? So here's what we're seeing in the data right now. Long-term holders are still distributing. They're moving co coins on chain, rotating their Bitcoins to new hands. So green areas in this chart show accumulations, long-term holders adding to their positions. Red areas are showing distributions. Long-term holders either are reducing holdings, right? So when we apply a 30 day moving average to this, the signals become a bit clearer, right? So we're in this sort of sustained distribution phase and we have been since around 120 K, right? So this isn't bearish in it by in it by itself. So if we look at 2017, for example, long-term holders distributed throughout the entire rally from around one K all the way up to, to 20 K, right? So shifts in this signal or shifts in this metric. So going from distribution to accumulation are also pretty key to look at, right? So same in 2021, look at when we started the rally up from uh, around 10K or 13K, this started going into distribution mode. And then we saw accumulation at around 59K, but then it quickly reverted back to accumulation at around 43K, right? So when we saw this big dip, and then into around 28K and up to the all time high, we saw this accumulation, a little bit of distribution, and then the pattern repeats essentially. So distribution means patient holders are taking profits as price rises, and that's normal, healthy bull market behavior in my opinion, right? So what we're seeing right now, in my opinion, is measured distribution. So not panic selling, not aggressive dumping, just a steady rotation of coins from long-term holders to newer buyers at these higher prices. Now, the fact that the price is still going higher despite long-term holders distributing, this tells me that the bull market structure is intact. So old hands selling to new hands who are willing to continually buy at these prices, at these levels, meaning the new capital coming in is offsetting this old capital that's being sold at higher prices. So if we take a look at the magnitude as well, the amount of Bitcoin being distributed, right? So right now we're seeing about uh, around 50 or 5,000 Bitcoin per day on average in net distributions. If we compare that to the peak in 2021, we're really not at those extreme levels yet where we typically see around, you know, 10, 20,000, even 50,000. It can go up as high as to like 40 or, or 40,000 Bitcoin per day being being distributed. So what I'm watching for in this metric is if we start to accelerate either dramatically while price stalls, that's when distribution starts to become a bit concerning for me. But right now, this is sort of this textbook late cycle behavior we've seen before as smart money rotates their gains and sells to, to newer holders, right? So the next chart I want to look at is something we talked about in the last video, but a bit of a different uh, look at it. So this is this MVRV with statistical bands the market value to realized value. So what we're doing here in this chart is we're basically comparing Bitcoin's market cap to the aggregate cost basis of all holders on chain. So what are the profits that people are experiencing on chain, either 2X, 3X, 4X profits relative to their average cost basis. So the overall market cost basis. So these colored bands show de standard deviations from the historical norm or the historical mean of the MVRV data set. So they identify basically these key overvaluation and undervaluation zones based on how far the price has deviated from the cost basis on chain, the average market cost basis. So right now we're sitting at a MVRV of around 2.27. And this is sort of started to go up from 2.04. And as you can see, we've seen higher lows in this metric, but also lower highs. So it's starting to sort of converge and diverge with the, with, with the, in those zones. And so 
we're elevated in the MVRV, but here's the, the key metric I'm watching. The the plus one standard deviation band. So if we if I just unselect these ones and zoom into this cycle, we can see that the plus one MVRV standard deviation is sitting at around 140k. So if we map the, the MVRV statistical bands cumulatively to Bitcoin's price, that's sitting around 140k. When this band historically has reached, uh, when the price has historically reached this band, we saw this at uh, at 73k. The band was at around 70k, and we went above it a little bit, but we couldn't hold it, and so we just we we sort of went back down below to the mean MVRV and we held support at that level. You can see we also did that in the in the run up to 100k where we sort of hit it and then didn't hold above it. And then we reverted back to the mean of the MVRV data set. So right now we're in between the 0 0.5 and the mean, and we're right above the 0 0.5. So my, what I'm watching for is if Bitcoin reaches 140K, test that one pl plus one standard deviation band. I'm personally taking some profits, not selling everything, but definitely you know reducing risk and locking in some gains. This is a key decision point. Historically, staying above this band is, is rare and unsustainable as we've seen this cycle. And so that's one metric on this chart. So another key point is what I talked about before, I alluded to before, is the mean of the MVRV. So this cycle, we've held the mean MVRV as support multiple times as we've seen. So every dip has either bounced off of or held above this level at around currently it's sitting at 100k so i believe that so this is my thesis so if we break above or i mean if we break below the mvrv mean in the next few months and can't reclaim it that could potentially mark the end of the cycle so i believe 2026 will be a bear market year i'm sticking with the four-year cycle framework until you know the d data that i'm looking at proves otherwise and the MVRV mean band is one of my key metrics for, you know, seeing that transition in the cycles. So key levels, just to wrap on on the MVRV band. So 140k is the is major resistance and profit taking zone that I'm personally looking at, and then the 100k, the mean band for critical support and you know overall cycle health. So the next metric I want to look at is the long term holder realized profit to loss ratio. Uh, and I talked about this in the last video, but I wanted to provide an update on this chart because right now the ratio has, I don't know if you can see this, but on the, the ratio has been increasing. So since the last video, we reached an, a key on-chain elevated level. So this metric, realize, this metric actually checks what the profit versus losses are on-chain for long-term holders. So above one means we're realizing uh, more profits than losses and below one means we're realizing more losses than profits. So it's a ratio. And as you can see, these spikes occur when long-term holders start to take massive profits on chain. This ratio basically shoots up logarithmically because they're realizing 10, hundred X, even a thousand X profits, depending on where their entry price was. So it's a ratio and the math gets a bit extreme when someone sells uh, Bitcoin at say 120 K that bought it at 10k that's a 12x profit so there's very little off loss to offset offset it and none in fact if they sold it uh now because there's basically no loss locked on chain we're at an all-time high so in 2017 this essentially spiked to extreme levels near the top same in 2021 in both peaks long-term holders were aggressively distributing into these strength rallies that we've seen and this ratio can stay elevated for extended periods of time as long-term holders start to distribute some newer hands at progressively you know higher prices but not not always for example in the 2021 secondary peak we only saw this barely spike on the all-time high twice and then it fell immediately down right after but for example the ratio in 2017 was elevated from around 1k all the way up to the all-time high at 20k similar to the first peak in 2021. So we stayed elevated for quite some time before it immediately fell down to nearly below one before we had that drop down into the summer 
into 28K and it even started realizing losses on chain for long-term holders. So we're seeing the same pattern right now. You know, long-term holders are starting to take some profits as we go up into that 124K level. The ratio is elevated, but in my opinion, price grinds higher because there are more new buyers willing to absorb that supply. And as price continues to make higher highs while the ratio is elevated, in my opinion, is a healthy distribution zone, old hands to new hands, right? That's how Bitcoin's bull markets typically work. And so before we wrap up, I want to talk about one more key level that I want to mention, and that is the short-term holder cost basis. Right now, this this uh, this sits at around 130, 113K, my bad. This is basically the average acquisition price of everyone who bought Bitcoin in the last 155 days. So it's similar to the MBRV, but instead of uh, just looking at the entire market's cost basis, we're looking at specifically short-term holders' cost basis. So here's here's a rule that has held true in essentially every Bitcoin bull market in history. As the price stays above the short-term holder cost basis, the bull market is still on. At 123K, we're well above that 113K level. The bull market structure remains intact by this key metric, right? So if we look at 2021, for example, we held it as support as the bull market can, as the bull market started. We never even retested this level until we retested it at around 44K when we had that drop into the summer. We dropped below it. If you bought then, it was a pretty good time. We saw this ratio, we saw the price go back up to the short-term holder cost basis. We, we overtook it, held it as support, and then we reached to new all-time highs. In 2017, we saw a similar thing play out. We held this level as support throughout the entire bull market. And then as the bull market started to roll over, we saw this metric, we saw the price fall below the short-term holder cost basis and subsequently retest it as resistance. We couldn't hold it, therefore the bull market was over. And we even saw this throughout the entire bear market in, in 2018. We could not break above this level and then we broke below it again afterwards. And you can see this as well in 2021, even though we had this massive drop over 70%, we had another drop when FTX crashed and this corresponded to the price not being able to overcome the short-term holder cost basis, right? This cycle, we've actually broken below it quite a few times and that's not necessarily bad or indicative of the cycle being over as we've seen because we've subsequently overtaken it and held it as support throughout this entire cycle. So if we break below 113K and can't reclaim it, that's when I start to ask, these harder questions about whether the cycle is ending. And this, this could continue to go back up or continue to increase the short-term holder cost basis as more short-term holders are buying prices, buying at, at higher prices, right? So let's put this all together. Here's what the data is showing me. Long-term holders are continually distributing rotating coins to newer buyers at higher prices. Normal late cycle behavior. MBRV is approaching that plus one resistance band at 140K, which is a historically significant level, right? If we break below the mean band at 100, 100K, that may signal some sort of cycle transition. And then finally, the long-term order realized profit to loss ratio is continuously going up as we've seen in this rally to 124K, 125K. As long as we hold above, uh, as long as, conviction holders are taking profits, but price continues highing, continues climbing. That's a healthy distribution in my opinion. But when you see this start to roll over, that's when we start have to asking, start to ask questions about whether the cycle is going to continue or not. And then finally, the short-term holder cost basis at 113K. If we hold above it, bull market structure remains intact. So my game plan is if we start running up to 130, 140K, the MVRB, MVRV band, as we reach it, I'm personally going to start taking some profits, not selling everything, but definitely reducing risk. If we broke below the, if we break below 113K, that short-term holder cost basis and can't reclaim it, I'm definitely going to start to get more defensive. And I'm still operating under the assumption that 2026 will be a bear market year until the data proves otherwise. And another interesting metric that I like to look at is the 
the market cycles ROI from bottom to peak. And so this essentially shows us the ROI and the time spent towards the all time high. So in 2015 to 2017, we saw 100x move, 1,068 days to reach that all time high from bottom to peak. In 2018 to 2021, we saw around 20x move and it took around 1,061 days. The current cycle, we're at around an, eight, an 8x and it's around 1,050 days. So what I'm looking at this cycle is if we start to go above 1,070, 1,060 days, that typically corresponds to historical market cycle tops, market cycles starting to transition into bear markets, right? So that's not to say it will exactly happen at around this range. It could extend past 1,070 days, right? I'm not saying it has to occur within this time frame, right? So that's one thing to look at. So does this mean we top at 140K, uh, the MVRB band? Maybe, maybe not. The data doesn't necessarily tell us the future. It just tells us the present and gives us the framework for, you know, this decision making that I've, I've discussed this video. So all these charts are available for free on chartinspect.com. You can explore them yourselves, adjust the parameters, see exact uh, calculations in the info sections below. All right. So if this analysis helped you understand where we're at in the cycle, subscribe for more on-chain data, drop a comment and what metrics you're watching most closely and what metrics you want me to talk about or add to the website. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.